in the fifth year after Hijrah, the kuffar surrounding Medina to Munawwara from Mecca to Mukarramah and all the other areas formed an alliance that they now wanted to unanimously all together attack the Muslims and put an end to them. So the army from Mecca to Mukarramah, the kuffar, together with the Jews and other Arab tribes all marched towards Medina to Munawwara. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam consulted the Sahaba and asked them, what should we do? Should we go out and meet the army or should we uh, remain in the city and protect our homes? Eventually it was decided that they should remain in the city. That is when Sayyidina Salman radiallahu anhum gave the suggestion that in Persia, when there was a siege on a city, they would dig trenches to protect the city. It was on that suggestion that Nabi Sallallahu had given the command that the trenches be dug around Medina Tul Munawwara. Groups of 10 were allocated portions to dig and they started busying themselves in the digging of the trenches. While a group were busy digging, they came across a huge boulder and they attempted to crush the boulder but they were unsuccessful. Eventually, the group that were assigned this task and then informed Sayyidina Salman radiallahu anhu. He then conveyed the message to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to that particular portion and he then took the axe in his hand. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam struck the boulder once and then he struck it twice and then he struck it a third time. And with each time it crushed. Then he said, when I struck it for the first time, I saw the palaces of the Roman emperor. And when I struck it for the second time, I saw the palaces of the Persian emperor. And when I saw, struck it for the third time, I saw the palaces in Sana'a of the Yemeni emperor. The Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala listening to this, they had complete conviction of the Messenger sallallahu that all these areas will come under the Muslim rule. However, the munafiqeen who were there, they said, look at Muhammad and his companions. Muhammad is in a condition, he has a stone tried to his belly of hunger. And he's talking about the Roman palaces. And he's talking about the Persian palaces. And he's talking about the Yemeni palaces. That's all a dream. It was at that point that verses were revealed in which Allah Rabbul Izzah says, Qulillahumma malik al-mulk. That listen, say, Allah is the king of kings. He is the master. Allah gives kingdom to who He wills. And He takes away kingdom from whoever He wills. The Jews were in charge of Medina to Munawwara. With the coming of the Muslims, it was taken away from them. The Kuffar were in charge of Makkah to Mukarramah. With the coming of the Muslims, it was taken away from them. Therefore, Allah Rabbul Izzah says, وَتَنْزِعُ الْمُلْكَ مِمَّنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ Allah Rabbul Izzah grants honor to whoever He wills. And He disgraces and He humiliates whoever He wills. Why? All goodness are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. Inna ka ala kulli shayin qadir. Indeed, Ya Allah, You have power over everything. So this gives us indication as to the power of Allah. And it's also a dua that we recite to attract the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The verses go on in which we speak of the power of Allah. Allah is the one who tulijun layla fin nahar. Allah passes the night into the day. Wa tulijun nahara fil layl. And He passes the day into the night. Meaning that as we move to summer, the days get longer, the nights get shorter. As we move to winter, the nights get longer, the days get shorter. This is the action of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa tukhrijul hayya min al mayyiti. Allah takes out from the living, He takes out something dead. From the dead, He takes out the living. From the womb of the mother, which is dead, He takes out a living child. Allah Rabbul Izzah takes out from the chicken, there comes an egg which is dead. From the egg, you have a chicken that is born. This is the cycle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Rabbul Izzah then ends off by saying that, man hisab. And Allah grants sustenance to whoever He wills according to His own measure. When He has control over all of these things that He's spoken about, then granting you sustenance 
how much you need, how much you require, that is surely within the capacity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us the full understanding of how important it is for us to talk about His greatness may be part of our daily lives. May Allah grant us.